Happy little nippers, aren't they? Even in the rain. Look at them. Ugh, Rudbeckia herta is such a pleasing flower to look at. So nice in our home gardens and landscapes. So are they native, pretty please? Non-native? Or are they awful, awful invasives? No whammies, no whammies, no whammies. (gasps) Native! Yes! (laughs) Black-eyed Susans are native to North America and the United States, so you can keep planting them. In fact, you should keep planting them. Oh, what a relief. What a relief. So much bad news out there, and now you've got some good news. (laughs) So, um, Rudbeckia herta, that herta means hairy, and that refers to the leaves and the stem being a little bit fuzzy. And it's in the same genus, of course, with other Rudbeckias, and it's in the same family, the Asteraceae family, as a lot of other plants you might be familiar with, like the gray-headed coneflower, or Echinacea purpurea, the purple coneflower, So many flowers have this similar look in this Asteraceae family. It's like the stereotypical flower design, right? And Rudbeckia herta is right in there with it. And it is so nice that so many of these flowers, oh, they're actually native to North America. Oh, she breathes a sigh of relief. Rudbeckia herta itself is biennial, meaning that from seed it will be two years before it flowers. So in that first year you get this basal leaf growth, which is like growth of leaves along the ground. And then in the second year it grows up tall and gives you that bright, beautiful flower. And I recommend not cutting the flower heads off when they're done blooming because when they turn, uh, when all the petals are gone and they turn black, I call those black tops. When they're black tops, uh, A, they look super cool. B, birds use those seeds. And so you get a bird show after the flowers are done and after you've enjoyed the pollinator show. And C, some of those seeds will fall and reseed your little Rudbeckia herta patch. So you'll get a continuous black eyed Susan show for years and years and years, right? And so. You know that you can keep planting these babies and enjoying them. Woo! And they support our native pollinators and insects. Yes! They're the larval host plant of several butterfly species, which means that the caterpillars of those butterflies will eat from the leaves. And so, if you see holes in the leaves of your black-eyed Susans, don't freak out. Stay cool. It just means that the caterpillars and maybe some other insects are eating them. And that's good news. Hooray! (laughs) Without caterpillars uh, and without feeding those caterpillars, we don't get butterflies. And Rudbeckia herta can handle getting chomped by some caterpillars and insects. It's used to it. It's evolved for it. So don't worry your pretty little head about it. And when you see holes in the leaves, you can feel a sense of relief. Phew! Insects and caterpillars are using this plant. Perfect. It's what you want. (laughs) Okay, so if you want to see what Rudbeckia herta looks like in every season of the year, I have a video showing just that, so I'll give you a link to that in the description. And then right now, sort of rapid fire, coming at you quick, I'm going to show you four different plants that are pretty decent to put together with your black-eyed Susans. So I'm going to go through them kind of quick um, because that's not really the point of this video, but just to give you some ideas, you know what I mean? Um, And so if you plant these other four plants in clumps, kind of near your black-eyed Susan clump or clumps, um, all in the same garden area, you'll have continuous flowering from spring all the way into fall time. So that's nice, right? Okay, rapid fire, here we go. So the first one I'm going to come at you with here is Amsonia Tabernay Montana. Uh, Some people call that the Eastern Blue Star. And so it blooms from April to June or somewhere in that ballpark. So this will be the first one that will come up. And it can get to be about three feet tall and three feet wide. It's kind of bush-like almost, although it does uh, die back every year. 
Anyways, um, the Eastern Blue Star will be your first flowering thing of the year with these nice, pretty blue flowers. Okay, and then next, I know purple cone flower, Echinacea purpurea, is what people tend towards, but I've been really getting into the pale purple cone flower, Echinacea pallida. It's such a neat look, right? And so the pale purple cone flower here um, and your black eyed Susans should come up ish around the same time, June to July. And so you'll have those two flowering at the same time, the yellow black eyed Susans and the sort of pale purple cone flower. Um, okay. And then next you have Asclepias tuberosa, which people sometimes call butterfly weed, and that'll bloom uh, June to August. And so that should come up right around the end of your black eyed Susans and pale purple cone flower. Right when they're getting those black tops, your butterfly weed should be coming up or blooming. And then at the way end of things, I've got Aster Novi Angliae or New England Aster, and this will bloom somewhere in the August to October range. And so that'll be the, the end of the growing season. And so then with all these four new plants I've introduced you to here, plus your Black Eyed Susans, uh, if you kind of clump them up all in the same area, you'll get blooming all the way from April to October. Um, and they're all, of course, native plants, and they look great. Um, and so they can be nice companions to each other. And all of these four plants, plus your black-eyed Susans, like uh, full to partial sun, similar soil types, and uh, moisture in the soil types. So they should do really nice together, right? So black-eyed Susans are native. Yes! So you can fill your yard with them if you'd like. And when they drop their flowers and make seeds, keep the seed heads intact. In the video description, I'll give you links to two native plant companies that I trust to give you the right seeds, no hybrids. Um, they don't give me any money to say that, but I just really trust them. So <laughs> if you're going to buy any new seeds or plants, I want to put you on the right path. And I will list out those other four native plants that you could make patches of next to your Black Eyed Susans for a full growing season of blooms and beauty. <laughs> Oh, plant native, plant Rebecca Herta.